It's Andre for the High Performance Academy and we're here with Guy from EFI Live to talk about their tuning software. More specifically though, we're going to be talking about some diesel engine tuning. Now Guy, EFI Live is pretty well known for your support with the GM brand and uh, tuning, reflashing the factory ECUs there. The diesel market is something uh, a little bit unusual and you know, for those of us who are familiar with tuning a petrol engine, diesel is, is completely different. Can you first of all start by giving us a little bit of background about your, your history? How did you get involved with tuning? What's your, what's your background there? Oh, well, Andre, uh, as mo most of us started out with carburetors and distributors and so on and so forth, uh, back in the mid-80s, I got involved with electronic fuel injection. And the thought of being able to modify things with a computer rather than have to take a carburetor apart was just fascinating to me. So your background started out with uh, petrol gas engines? Absolutely, yeah. And then slowly as the EFI engines evolved, I kind of followed that through and then discovered the wonderful world of diesel performance. Okay, so diesel performance has, seems to have gone through a, a huge uh, sort of advance in the last decade perhaps. You know, we've gone to come up with uh, common rail diesel and that seems, from what I've seen in the performance industry, that seems to have been a catalyst for a, a huge improvement in the diesel performance. Where does EFI come in with that common rail diesel? Certainly the common rail was a thing that really allowed uh, the diesel emissions and mileage to take a giant leap forward and of course all of that needs to be electronically controlled. So that's where EFI Live steps in and helps our customers tune their diesel engines that are electronically controlled. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the basics of diesel versus petrol performance. Yeah, the, the two are, are completely at odds, I guess. You know, Coming from a petrol background, I'm used to aiming for a very narrow air-fuel ratio, and, and really that's the key to the performance, basically keeping the engine alive and making good power. Diesel, though, is a bit different. Tell us about it. Yeah, certainly. I mean, the main difference between the two engines is gasoline is air regulated. So we have a butterfly that generally controls air, and then we're trying to match fuel with it. Diesel, on the other hand, is completely fuel regulated. There's nothing that regulates air. So it's almost 180 degrees from the gasoline world, and sometimes it's a little difficult for people to get a hold of that at first, but once they do, they really appreciate the fact that a diesel motor will run over such a wide air fuel ratio. It'll run anywhere from 10 to 1 to 80 to 1. So when, just moving back, when you say that the diesel engine is, is fuel regulated, the, they're literally on most diesel engines we don't have a throttle butterfly like we'd expect to see on a normal petrol engine, correct? Right, that's 100% correct. We, ha we have a turbocharger which does a great job of forcing air into the motor, but fundamentally there's nothing that regulates air. So anytime we want a diesel motor to do something, we add fuel to it. So that fuel control is, is obviously really critical. Now, what sort of improvements can we expect to see you know, when we're modifying a diesel engine, modifying the, the fuel supply parameters? What are the advances in terms of power production you could expect to see without actually going and making hardware changes, you know, bolting on bigger turbochargers, maybe bigger exhaust systems? Is there a lot of unlocked potential in a factory diesel engine? Well, that's the thing, that's a great question, and that's the thing that got me really excited about diesel performance, is that Fundamentally, without ever modifying any of the hard parts, uh, say in a GM Duramax engine, you can effectively double the output at the rear wheel. Double? You serious? So let's think about that for a minute. When I first started modifying, we were looking at a 2003 Duramax engine that made about 500 foot-pounds of torque and 250 horsepower. Without ever opening the hood, strictly modifying the fuel map through the OBD2 port, I was able to get 500 rear wheel horsepower and 1,000 foot-pounds of torque. Now, to put that into perspective, that made it faster than the Corvette I was driving at the time, and this was an 8,000 pound vehicle. Okay, so now I'm starting to see why so many people are getting interested in diesel performance. That, that sort of improvement, you couldn't possibly hope to get that out of a petrol engine without going and spending thousands on hardware, correct? Absolutely, exactly. So without going to you know, huge cylinder heads and camshafts and a lot of modifications, you'd never get that improvement on a petrol engine. Okay, so this, this improvement, a lot of it's coming from literally pumping more diesel fuel into the combustion chamber, correct? Well, everything about the motor is electronically controlled. So boost is electronically controlled, fuel's electronically controlled, timing events, and so on. So manipulating those parameters, you can actually get that kind of an increase in power. 
Now where are the limiting factors? Again, we go back to petrol engines and we know that we've got a, a narrow air fuel ratio range that we're trying to focus on and we know if we go too lean we're going to risk damaging the engine, we're going to have an exhaust gas temperature that's too high, maybe we're going to melt pistons, valves etc. The AFR if your ratio on a diesel engine really doesn't seem to be as critical. Are you turning off exhaust gas temperature more than AFR? Certainly, uh, the thing with the diesel is you'll never hurt a diesel running at lean. You just you just run them lean to the point where they stop running. You won't hurt it lean. You will hurt it going too rich because the fuel is so slow burning and it's so hot that the piston doesn't have a chance to cool off. And so that's where the aspects come in on, on diesel failures is in a towing situation or an endurance situation running it too hot for too long. So you really do have to take into account the usage of the engine when you're tuning something that would be perhaps a, a sports usage diesel versus something that's towing a, a huge RV or a caravan or something where it's really going to be under load. You'd have to take that into account with your tuning strategy and how much fuel is being injected. Absolutely. As with anything, application is very important. So there are things we can get away with in a racing situation that we certainly can't get away with in a work truck situation. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, the diesel phenomenon that is black smoke out the exhaust because you know, we take it to extremes and we look at uh, truck racing or, or uh, tractor pulling and, and the, the common theme there is a huge plume of black smoke coming out the exhaust stack the whole way down the strip. So what causes that? Why is that a good thing? You know the interesting thing about it is every fuel, be it petrol, be it diesel, be it methanol has an ideal air fuel ratio known as the stoichiometric ratio. That ratio describes where we get the maximum energy out of the fuel. So for diesels that ratio isn't that much different than petrol. It's actually 14.6. Now the problem is is that we start to see gray haze or a smoke out the tailpipe at about 22 to 1. Diesels by definition originally when you purchase them are tuned into the 40 or 45 to 1 range. But to get the maximum power out of the fuel we've got to substantially richen them up. Unfortunately that means we have a lot of emission situations, a lot of particulates, a lot of soot coming out. But most of us petrol guys would look at a diesel motor smoking that black and think there's something wrong with it, it's too rich. In an ideal situation though that's when you're actually getting the most power out of the fuel. Now in a road application we've got particulate filters in the exhaust to try and cut down on some of that smoking though? Absolutely, and certainly that's where EFI Live comes in, is giving our customers the ability to write those tunes that are clean for a daily driven or towing application, and then by the same token in a competition environment, they have the ability to switch back. So from an EFI Live perspective, you know, we, we have the software and you want to go and tune a late model common rail diesel engine, how much control have you got over that fuel delivery? A tremendous amount of control. Actually, you have almost the same amount of control that the that the OEM engineers had. So it's a tremendous tool, very powerful. And what sort of limitations are there in terms of how far we can go? Are you talking, you know, injector sizing as a limit? Can you can you control larger injectors? Is that even an option? Absolutely. Yeah, that's and that's very common. We reach the end of uh, what the factory injector can control. We put a larger injector in and tune for it, and away we go. Great look Guy, it's been really interesting getting a little bit more knowledge on the diesel tuning market, certainly something I haven't had uh, much experience with myself. It's really interesting that you're getting that sort of power improvement and um, I can see why it's such an attractive market. Thank you for talking to us today. Thanks very much Andre, my pleasure. For online tuning courses visit learntotune.com.